Good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Corey Lefevre with Garden Fever. I'm bringing you another uh, video for you to maybe make your gardening a little bit more easier and educational and funner. Anyway, I wanted to do a video today on a very important weed. Well, I shouldn't say very important weed, but uh, a weed that I think that everybody should grow. And not that kind of weed. Weed as in a plant growing in an unwanted area of your garden. Um, and that's purslane. Um, and the reason why is because unlike some of the other edible weeds, because surprisingly, a lot of weeds are edible. They're easy to grow, um, take very little care, have some nutrient value, but we don't like them because a lot of them are bitter. Um, and just They just don't have great flavors like some of the other more tender plants that we grow. Um, like dandelions and sorrel, you know, which when cooked into other things and other flavors, they're not too bad. But uh, to just like go outside and pick a dandelion leaf, you're going to get hit with some bitter taste. Um, so a lot of people don't do it. And a lot of people don't know that you can eat a lot of weeds like thistle and various other ones. But the reason why purslane is my favorite and, and why I'm encouraging all my viewers and anybody that runs across this video on YouTube to, to eat is because it tastes good. There's hardly any bitterness. I almost would say none. Um, maybe some of the larger, older leaves might have a, a hint of it, but it is one leaf from a weed that I can just forage and eat, and I don't mind it. It tastes pretty good, um, and it's easy to grow. It's a very prolific weed. It's found around the world. It's one of the most prolific weeds in the world. You can go almost anywhere and find it. Um, so it's 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 worldwide. So in terms of survival, this is one to know, in my opinion, because no matter where you get lost, there's a good chance you're going to find it. Now, obviously, not everywhere in the world, but in, in most of the world. Um, in fact, most people recognize this weed by growing in the cracks of our sidewalks. Now, the ones growing in the cracks of our sidewalks are are very malnourished. They got little water. Um, they're eating basically dirt for you know, but they're still growing. So if you actually cultivate it, give it some good, healthy, nutrient-rich soil, maybe even water it every once in a while, it can grow very thick, succulent leaves that are very good for you. Um, it's most known for its omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, it's comparable to fish oil. People that take fish oil um, supplements, this is one that that you can, uh, you can eat and get kind of the same amount of um, omega-3 fatty acids. It's great for vegans and vegetarians, for people, you know, people that don't eat fish. Um, it, it can provide uh, that nutrient for you without actually eating fish. So um, it's not a bad plan. I mean, you can neglect it. It's it'll grow easy um, and it tastes good. So I wanted to share with you some of the vitamins real quick. I got it on my phone because I hate memorizing. There's just millions of plants to. To memorize and I just can't memorize them all but um, just to give you an idea of some of the vitamins that are in this plant it has uh, niacin it has riboflavin thiamine vitamin A vitamin C a little bit of sodium and potassium calcium copper copper iron magnesium phosphorus and zinc just to name a few so I mean it's it, it has some vitamins um, mostly known for its fatty acids it's succulent so and if you treat it well, there's quite a bit of water and, and whatnot in the leaves, you know, just like an aloe vera or, you know, where you can actually get some liquid from it. So in terms of survival, it's a very good plant, but there's tons of recipes. I've been online and, and I'm not doing a video on recipes, so I didn't, I'm not gonna share any with you, but uh, if you go online and you look, um, there's tons of recipes for it, um, tons of chefs that use it. Um, it it's, it's, it, it kind of blows my mind because it's so easy to grow, it's so hardy, yet the leaves taste good. I don't mind sitting in my lawn chair on a hot summer day and just eating it, um, which I can't really do with like, uh, let's say, dandelions. The leaves are just too bitter. I've got to have some ranch and you know various other vegetables to kind of dole down that bitterness in order for me to really enjoy it. You know, This is one leaf I can just eat, and it's good. So, anyway, I'll go ahead and show this to you here, because um, I got one growing in a pot. Um, 
And I've noticed that if you just plant it and let it go, it binds out, the leaves are real thin. But if you trim it, um, it'll thicken the leaves up and push them out. So I recommend you doing that. There's a little tip for you. Anyway, this is mine that I got. And I let this one go. It might be kind of hard to see. I'll show you up close here in a second. It's got little yellow flowers and they're edible too. Um, but the leaves are real small and thin. Um, it, when you trim them, and I just go around the rim and let it bush out, you get bigger and thicker leaves. Um, so you can fill up better with them, if you will. Um, don't eat the root. The root's not very good. It'll give you a stomach ache. But I'd stick to the leaves and the flowers. Um, also, I should warn you, there is a, a weed that is very similar to it that looks like it. And the number, so make sure you can identify it. And I'm going to help you here. Um, the one that you don't want to eat, they have, they kind of grow the similar and kind of have the same sh similar shape to leaves. But th the purslane is thicker. It's a succulent type leaf. So uh, the, the one that's bad for you, the cousin, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name. I'll put it down below when I get to the editing part of the video, but uh, it, 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 uh, its leaves are thin and not succulent, so that's one way. They both have kind of reddish stems or red, red tinted stems, um, but the major way to identify the two, or for me has been the easiest, is the one that is not good has a hairy stem. It's got a little furry type texture with hairs. Perslane is very smooth. Um, it's very almost looks squishy you know like it like it's full of water and that's the best way you can identify the two um, so without further ado I'll show you an up close shot so you can kind of better help identify it but I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture or uh, the name of the other one below when I do get to the editing part so let me step behind here so you can see here there we go see as you can see this the stems are kind of reddish but they uh, they're very smooth and look at those succulent leaves now the ones over here are thinner because I didn't trim it I did that on purpose to kind of show you guys but the ones over here I trimmed and look at how they're getting thicker and bigger now guys this 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 plant is very bitterless I mean I love eating these leaves for for how nutrient they are and and how good they are for you being edible this is the this is the weed to grow so I want to encourage everybody to just, if you see it, either let it be or take care of it. If you throw it some good soil and water it, it'll thicken up. The leaves will be tender and tasty. Some of the bigger, older ones might have like a smidge of bitterness, but this is one leaf I can just forage on and, it, and it's good, you know. So anyway, this is Corey Lefevre with Garden Fever. Share, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Um, I'll have my email in the description below if you have any questions. I'd love to answer them. Um, uh, I'm not as popular as some of the more hardcore YouTubers. And I apologize for my infrequency of videos. I've, I will continue to do this throughout time. Um, mainly as a passion and to share knowledge for everybody. So without further ado, until next time, happy gardening. And we'll see you then.